We're pleased to welcome Sylvan Zhang. Sylvan is product and operations lead at Starboard, working on various product research and development projects in the areas of network governance, Web3 service marketplaces, and creative user engagement. Today, Sylvan will be charting a course through new, future, new frontiers in Web3 with Filecoin EVM. Welcome, Sylvan. Hi, how's everyone doing? Uh, can you guys see my screen? We can now, yes. Cool. Uh, yeah, hello everyone. I um, hope that um, all of you guys are doing well and enjoying your time in Amsterdam. Uh, my name is Sylvan and I work at Starboard uh, on products and also operations. I'm um, really honored to be here, although not physically, <laughs> but hope you guys can feel my spirits. So, um, Today, uh, I will be talking about like why, why Filecoin uh, is an important building block of Web3, and then also like what new opportunities will be unlocked when you combine the provable storage of Filecoin with the programmability of EVM. So uh, before we get started, um, let me just quickly introduce uh, Starboard a little bit, uh, who we are, uh, what we do, and what are our goals. So basically, uh, we are a main contributor to the Filecoin ecosystem, focusing on network analytics and also application design. And the reason we're doing this is that we found the, the Filecoin network to be highly sophisticated, right? I mean, uh, I mean, it's sophisticated enough for 11 speakers to talk straight on various topics without any repetition. And, uh, but this level of sophistication brings many challenges to the ecosystem and also to all its participants, like storage providers, clients, in investors, in terms of understanding Filecoin and also participating in this unique Web3 data economy. And that's why uh, we aim to provide analytic solutions and also product development to drive uh, network understanding and adoptions. And for the analytics part, I think my colleague Edward has uh, had a, a, a great talk talk um, uh, this afternoon and basically our approach is to build data analytic infrastructures and uh, to help people understand uh, what's happening. And um, for, the pro uh, for the product part, um, we're trying to build like intuitive products uh, to help people use the Filecoin blockchain, uh, whether it's making search deals, calculating service economics, or participating in a creative data storage ex experience. So. We have been working in the Filecoin ecosystem for quite some time, and what did we find? First, Filecoin is enormous. Uh, it has around 16 exabyte of storage capacity available. Uh, to put that into perspectives, uh, if the recording of my talk, <laughs> of this talk, is 16 exabyte, it means that this talk will last about uh, 3.8 million years. But I mean, it's okay. I, I promise I won't keep you guys that long. Um, and also, there are around like 72 petabytes uh, of real data uh, stored on Filecoin from over 3 million storage deals. And according to the stats from NFT.storage, uh, there are over 52.58.2 uh, million NFT objects stored on Filecoin. And in terms of assets, and this is the part that uh, people usually uh, uh, didn't pay too much attention to, in terms of assets, there are currently 130 million Filecoin locked with the network, which is this equivalent to around 2.6 billion in total, uh, 2.6 billion dollars in total value locked. And also Filecoin has one of the most um, uh, vibrant developer ecosystem in uh, Web3. Um, I mean, there are fabulous teams working on all kinds of use cases, all kinds of infrastructures, tooling, and also like different programs. And so far, uh, many has considered Filecoin as the storage layer for Web3. Uh, and the current major use cases uh, include, uh, include uh, providing storage to NFTs and also Web3 use cases, uh, providing uh, storage to um, like Web3, uh, to Web2 data sets, um, or like providing permanent storage, and also to um, a metaverse, gaming, uh, audio, and video. However, we think that this is just the beginning. Uh, when smart contract programmability are, are combined with provable storage on Filecoin, there are a lot of value and potential to be unlocked. So uh, think of the storage and retrieval capabilities on Filecoin as the layer zero. And it's already a super valuable stack to Web3, but it's insufficient for developers uh, who want to build more complex applications through programmable smart contracts. 
And now let's go to the layer one of the smart contract programmability, which is the key to the success of Ethereum. And currently, Falcon does not have this kind of user-defined smart contracts. Uh, so in order to access programmability, developers use bridges to other programmable blockchains. Um, I mean, I've uh, presented a few, um, like for example, like Ethereum and also Near are some of the uh, uh, more like commonly used uh, blockchains for uh, for uh, for programmability on Filecoin. The Filecoin team is working very hard to bring general programmability to Filecoin, and there have been tremendous progress with the development of the Filecoin virtual machine or the FEM. So the FEM uh, is the Watson-based polygon execution environment. Uh, it's designed to support both native Falcon actors within languages that compile to Watson, and also foreign runtimes um, such as EVM. So it means that Falcon will bring, bring together smart contracts and also provable storage uh, on one network. I'm just like so excited to talk about what opportunities that uh, FEM will unlock. So a um, oops. So a very obvious uh, opportunity will be in the uh, NFT space. Um, uh, I would like to share an article I read a while ago. Uh, this author makes a joke about the current NFT structure, where the storage of the NFT metadata is not verifiable. So it's pretty funny. Um, it's like really funny thought um, experiment, but consider that billions of dollars of NFTs are actually traded every day. I think it maybe it's worth some attention. And a great opportunity uh, is to uh, create NFTs with verifiable metadata. And it's enabled by uh, decentralized storage and also smart contracts. So, I mean, you will never find a, a strange looking emoji in your wallet after spending uh, significant money on an NFT. And another thing that FEM can enable uh, is like content first um, NFT. So it's actually quite bizarre to me uh, that people don't actually care about the content of the NFT, uh, but we believe that there's like tremendous value in the content as well um, uh, uh, going forward. So just want to um, briefly mention NFT storage. It's a wonderful uh, tool uh, for, for people to store their NFT with like Filecoin. And then we, we, we're pretty sure that uh, with the um, programmability and also like uh, capability of uh, the FEM, um, it will be, there will be even more like use cases uh, and more popular use cases uh, with um, uh, the, the powerful provable storage on Filecoin. And uh, so earlier I mentioned that there are actually uh, people a lot of people often ignore that there are just so much uh, assets that was uh, committed to the Falcon network. So, uh, which I think that uh, another opportunity um, uh, that lies ahead is DeFi with Falcon. And as previously mentioned, uh, there are over 130 million Falcon logged with the network. And if we uh, are comparing to some of the DeFi projects, a $2.6 billion TVL, we actually rank Falcon eighth among all DeFi projects. And uh, what's more important is that according to our data, uh, we found that there's there are actually over 1 million files in demand for token collateral every week. And also the analyzed on-chain field to uh, field uh, return can be as high as like 90%, uh, which, which I, think, I think is a great opportunity for a staking protocol uh, that, that can uh, leverage this um, uh, fantastic uh, high fuel on fuel return and then uh, generates like a really attractive yield uh, over those on the other uh, blockchain networks, which are normally on like, um, um, like uh, low double digits, like 15%, 20%, right? Um, and another opportunity is data DAOs. Uh, I, I feel like, um, I'm, Many of the speakers have already talk, addressed on this um, uh, uh, topic, so I just want to um, like bring some different perspectives as well. So we often hear people saying that uh, data is the most important and also the most valuable assets in the 21st century. So creating a DAO around data assets seem, would, would seem, I, I would say it seems like very reasonable. And um, like from my perspective, I think there are generally three kinds of value in data. Uh, one is the value in evidence and record, 
Uh, the second is in uh, the value in information. And also the third is the value in derived insights from like, um, for example, like machine learning or computation over data, et cetera. So there could be like various forms of data DAOs holding that data assets that generate different values. Uh, for example, on the um, evidence and records, you can have like data DAOs that aim to preserve records for the internet, or maybe just making sure a meme will last forever, like for centuries, right? That would be pretty cool. And for the value in information, um, like a pay per view, a pay per download, um, a business model can work well with like articles, movies, and music. I right? think of a, a DAO that, that holds um, uh, the rights to like some articles or some movies. And then uh, you have this kind of like a pay-per-view or paper download uh, um, uh, mechanism. All right. This DAO can, can run itself as well, right? Because it is generating value. Um, and also like for derived insight, insights, um, user can pay uh, to compute over data asset owned by a data DAO, right? This can be a very common use case for machine learning and also like deep learning. So I just want to bring like uh, uh, bring out an example uh, is the uh, Ocean Protocol. I mean it's not on um, FEM, uh, but it's um, it is a, a data market on on top of the leverage the the storage of Filecoin. Uh, and basically, what they do is to create uh, they they create and also uh, use data tokens to publish and also consume data services. Right. So this can be a very good examples for uh, some of the uh, data DAOs uh, explorations or like uh, data market, uh, data asset market, marketplace uh, explorations uh, for FEM. And um, also just to add on like um, what Deep uh, just introduced uh, about Falcoin Plus, which is a great incentive program to use for storage on Falcoin. And uh, it gives um, storage providers 10x block rewards and can significantly improve their service economics. So uh, with the help of FEM and also like Falcon Plus, uh, we can actually create a store to earn experience to encourage users to store useful data on Filecoin and have storage providers bid to store them, right? So it actually makes a lot of sense because um, by uh, adopting the Falcon Plus program, um, the the uh, storage providers will have like a higher ROI, a higher uh, storage returns, and um, and then they, they are more than willing to actually take a share of that uh, to bid for more volumes of um, uh, data caps or more volumes of like useful storage. And this actually also creates an incentives for for clients to migrate their data or to 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 actually store their data with Filecoin. So this actually can be a very a unique use case and also like a unique uh, experience for Filecoin uh, as it can uh, never happen with like a web two storage providers. Uh, and there are uh, many more ideas and uh, opportunities uh, that will be enabled by, by FBM, uh, including uh, perpetual storage, uh, reputation metrics, storage bounties, uh, retrieval markets and so on. Uh, and for the interest of time, I would just provide some context, but not uh, discuss uh, them in details. So uh, what is Starboard doing or what is Starboard exploring with uh, FEN? We're actually uh, exploring a few um, uh, different um, uh, use cases um, uh, that, that, that can uh, potentially uh, leverage the, the capabilities that FEN brings. For example, we're, um, we're trying to explore the store to earn uh, experience uh, the slide I showed uh, earlier um, uh, on the on the right, uh, this this is actually a a uh, product exploration uh, from uh, the Starboard team. Uh, so basically, we're trying to uh, build a a auction style um, a platform uh, for people to actually put their um, um, valuable or like put their useful data um, on this platform for uh, storage provider to bid to store them. Right. So this is like a like a like a, a prototype of a store uh, store to earn experience. And with if uh, FEM comes online, a lot of that logic can happen uh, on chain uh, with the programmability of smart contracts. And also another thing, uh, because we, we, we believe like uh, we are like working a lot with uh, data analytics and there will uh, definitely be a lot of new metrics, and a lot of uh, new data fields uh, that we can um, analyze and then provide insights on them. So we, we uh, and one area we're also uh, working on as uh, FEM data analytics. 
reputation metrics. Uh, this is also very important. We have um, um, a, a reputation dashboard for PowerPoint storage providers that provides um, uh, context for uh, when people want to, for example, uh, make a lending deal to a, a miner, uh, to a storage provider, make a uh, or making a storage deal to, to a storage provider. Right? You need a lot of um, context. It's just like you you are making a, a deal with like a Airbnb host, and then you want to see uh, their track records. And um, uh, also, we are we are exploring like uh, DeFi lending, right? So that that could be a very uh, interesting use case as well. Uh, and we're all, all we're also hiring. We're hiring uh, smart contract engineers, blockchain engineers, um, data scientists, researchers, uh, product managers. So, uh, so if you're interested in uh, riding along this amazing journey, uh, please uh, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we can also discuss more opportunities that FEM will bring as well. Uh, all right, that uh, concludes my presentation. I uh, ho hope you like it. Uh, I hope I have provided some uh, useful information. Thank you. Great, thanks Sylvan for that data-based view into the possibilities inherent in the Filecoin network. We have time for a few questions to Sylvan. A lot of data, I know you have to take, take time to come up with a good 